Azure offers us something called Custom Vision. Custom Vision is a part of Azure Cognitive Services, and it's very similar to Computer Vision. Now, while Computer Vision is a way of using Azure's pre-trained models that can identify many, many, many different types of objects and images, uh, Custom Vision allows you to provide your own images and train Azure to identify custom objects of your choosing inside of those images and future images like them. Okay? So this is going to be helpful if you have something very specific to your domain, such as if you are a manufacturer and you are trying to detect bad welds, or you are a hospital and you're trying to detect cancer on an x-ray. Or <laughs> let's say you're a nerd who makes videos like this for fun, and you're trying to find all the little missing hockey balls in your basement. Right? These are things that custom vision can help you with in object detection because you can train your model on whatever you care about and then you can show it any number of future images. And it's going to say, hey, I found that thing you trained me to look for. It's right over here or here's five of them in this corner of, the, of your basement, hypothetically speaking. Anywho, let's take a look and see how it works and when you might want to use it. So here I am in the custom vision portal and I'm going to create a new project just for object detection. This is going to be an object detection project that's going to let me detect street hockey balls in images in my basement. So I'm going to give it a name, a description, and then I'm going to choose a resource. And this is what Azure Cognitive Service or custom vision resource I have that it's going to run on. And I'm going to select object detection. Next, I need to choose the domain that this is going to be in. Now, the domain, you're limited to about five different options. General, general A1, logo, products and shelves, and compact domains. Now, general and general A1 are very similar, uh, but general A1 is non-deterministic. So if you train it on the exact same set of images, it's going to potentially give you a different level of accuracy, different results than if you'd done just general. General is generally what I would recommend, it's what Microsoft generally recommends. But once you've figured out which domain you want, you click create project and it actually creates your blank project. Now, this project doesn't have any images inside of it, so you need to add some of your own in order to train it. So here's a bunch of pictures I've taken from my basement. Each of these has different sets of hockey balls in them. So you see I have, uh, what, four uh, orange hockey balls here. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to give all these images, actually all but three of them, to Azure. And we're going to keep those three just so I can validate the performance of my model. Okay? So I'm going to go in, select all but the last three. And this is just an arbitrary number I picked, uh, or arbitrary precision that I picked. I'm going to click Upload, and that's going to spend some time uploading those images to Azure. And I'm going to speed this up here so it's a little faster for us. Okay, so it completed, but it note that one of them failed because it was over six megabytes in size. There's always gonna be image limits in Azure, but you can see that all these images came up and the ones that were, the one that was above six megabytes, that one did not transfer correctly. But now that I'm in here, I can actually click on the hockey balls in each image and I can label it and say, hey, this is my image. This is the thing I want you to care about. And I'm gonna just go through and I'm gonna tag all these things. Note that it's suggesting a bounding box for me when I hover over each one. Sometimes it doesn't. This one's a little blurry. So I can click and drag and, and define my own bounding box. Right? So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to tag all these guys. And note that I don't just have to be tagging the balls. I could be tagging uh, the, the hockey pucks or other things of interest. But in this particular custom vision of the model, I only want to find the balls, so that only makes sense for me. Sometimes it gets a little tricky and you'll have to do those the, the dragging. But in general, Azure is able to say, hey, here's an object. I'm not sure what this is, but here's what I would recommend for a bounding box for it. And once you have a su sufficient uh, variety of images uh, uh, tagged, uh, you can go in and you'll be able to train your model. And it's actually going to create a deep learning model of all the things in your images. But once we give it to Azure, Azure's going to say, hey, um, I'm going to internalize these tagged objects. I'm going to form a deep learning model using neural networks around this. And I'm going to be able to take a look at this and identify hockey balls with some degree of accuracy in future models, which is really cool. Oh, sorry, future images rather. In general, Azure recommends that you have at least uh, 15 images uh, tagged. It won't let you try to train before you have 15, but a greater degree of variety um, is going to help you out. So different levels of lighting, different angles, different heights, uh, anything you can do to give yourself a, a, a lot more variety is going to help the ultimate effectiveness of your trained model because it's not just going to be effective in the same scenarios in which you trained your, your testing data. All right, so I've now tagged all of those images, and now I can go in and I can train my model. You can do quick training and advanced training. Advanced training lets you specify the amount of time to take. Uh, here I just did quick training, and I sped up time, and it came back and, uh, and completed. Now Azure shows you three metrics for this. 
precision is the confidence you can have in a positive prediction. So it says, hey, this is a hockey ball over here. That's how much you can trust it. Recall, on the other hand, is how much it can recognize uh, an object. So if there is a hockey ball in the image, what percentage of a chance do you have at recognizing it? And then mean average precision, or MAP, that's going to be your ability to recognize uh, all these different tags or classes in an image uh, on average. So if we had balls and pucks, that would be sort of the average of your precision for each one. So very useful metrics, very good for helping you understand the performance of your model. If you want to see how accurate this model is, you can click on the tag of ball and then go in and see the five images it reserved here for testing and see we can see the red uh, lines are where it predicted a ball was and the white lines are where one actually was according to our tags. And we can see this one here is predicting a couple balls in places where they weren't, but in general it is it is able to find the balls that do exist. Right. Um, so this one, I love this image because you can see there's a couple of, of uh, pieces of food in the upper left that it's, it thinks look like balls. And I, I agree from this image, uh, so I can't fl uh, flag it too much for that. Uh, but you can see generally it's pretty good, uh, especially for a little bit of, of training that we gave it. Uh, you can give it additional pieces, uh, images that it's never seen before. And it's going to analyze them and do, detect objects there. So here it's able to find the ball. Um, and then we'll take a look at that with another image as well. So this is really helpful for seeing, hey, I've trained a model. How effective is it at new images, new data, different circumstances? So here I'm giving it hockey balls on a completely different floor, different lighting conditions, etc. And it's still able to identify them pretty easily. I know it does take it a little bit of time to generate these predictions, uh, but that's okay. Once you're ready to go in and, and uh, publish a model, you can go in and click on the performance and then click on publish. And that's going to let you publish that model uh, uh, to an endpoint. Once the model is published, you're going to be able to make a REST call to it or use the Azure Cognitive Services API or SDK and be able to make prediction calls from it and generate object predictions for new images. So very cool. So that's custom vision in a nutshell. It allows you to provide your own training images and say, hey, here are the things that I care about. It's going to be something that's very specific to what you are working on. It's probably not going to be finding hockey balls in your basement, but it could be. Um, I'd challenge you to try, try this out, try to find something like, Hey, identifying Waldo and where, where's Waldo books or something similar to that. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things that you might be able to find if you have the right images and, uh, an interest in a particular type of object. Uh, but Azure custom vision lets you do this without you needing to use any code whatsoever. And it's very, very powerful and surprisingly accurate. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. If you've used it before, let me know how you, how you used it. And I'd be curious to learn more from you.